Hey, Bill. All right. So we're back, and we promised everybody that uh, as we prepare for this upcoming webinar on Thursday, the 14th, 6 p.m. Pacific, that we would address the subject of being stuck. And, you know, in my work, I find that, you know, it's a big problem. It's, it's huge. I mean, everybody has, has something, you know. So tell us how we can use Cogno movement to, to, to work on that problem. Well, you're, um, you're right. Uh, the interesting thing here uh, that most people don't know is everybody has got one thing minimum that they're looping on. Uh, they're not telling you, but their brain cycles, they're just thinking about pretty much their life is dominated with one thing, one problem. Some people maybe have two, no more than three. But they're, all their kind of their brain cycles uh, are, are focused around this. Could be something uh, about themselves or the past or a person that did them wrong or uh, something that they're afraid of in the future. It could be anything. But um, the suffering on this goes on typically uh, for years, uh, decades. I see people in their 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and they've had it all their lives you know, since early childhood. And so it's, it's, as, it's as common as weeds, uh, you know. Yeah, I agree with you. It's true, but it's interesting. So why do you say up to three? I mean, I know everybody has a, a few. I find it in my own work. But why do you say up to three? That's interesting. Because uh, you only have so much capacity. I mean, there's so many hours in a day and so many brain cycles. Uh, you just can't handle anymore. You, you, you know, uh, each one of those issues you just keep thinking about and, and thinking and feeling negatively about. So that's why. It's just I, really possible. I love that. And I, you know, you're right. I mean, there is only so much time and space in the brain and, and body for this thing. Okay, great. So I'm excited about this. So what do we do first? So one of the techniques that I learned was to connect. You know, you connect with your emotion, how you, how you feel about this thing. So the way out of this thing, the problem, is the way in. All you do is feel it. Look down with your eyes. That helps you connect with your emotions. And, uh, and you feel this thing. You're not trying to solve it, not trying to heal it, not trying to make it better. You feel how you feel about it. Allow yourself to feel it completely. That is the real key to making this work. 90% of your attention as you do the exercise should be on this feeling. That's how you feel. So feel it. Okay, so first we're going to connect right in. We're going to use the trick of, of looking down and connecting in. Okay, so we're going to feel the emotion fully or just however we feel it, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. And, and then what do we do at that point? And then uh, what you do is you either with a partner, you throw that ball uh, against a wall and you catch it left side of your body with two hands or right side of your body with two hands. And you say the color that you see, orange, green, red, blue. And uh, that's basically uh, what you do with it. You just do the uh, exercise and like again, 90% of your attention is on that issue. Okay, and then uh, do we give it a, a designation? Like I know that um, in other cognitive movement exercises that you and I have talked about, you said do we give it a level between one and 10. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Want, okay. we, we give it a, a level of one and 10 when we start so that we know our progress, right? I, uh, how do I know when I'm done? It, it was a 10 and now I don't feel it. That's a zero, right? Uh, so, uh, yes, that's how that works. Yeah, I mean, in my lingo, we call that a test. And then we can test again at the end, too. So, yeah, totally get that. Okay, so then we're going to start, as we did before, and we're going to throw the ball back and forth with a partner or against a wall, noticing the colors. And remind us again what that does for us, the back and forth and the... Okay, colors. so your, um, the ball... It basically occupies the right side of my brain. It sees three-dimensional objects and where they're at in time and space. The left-hand side of my brain sees the colors and symbols. So you actually have to say the color and symbol that you see. 
So by doing this, you're activating uh, left, right. And it's also, uh, because you're going left and right, it's going across, the data is going across the corpus callosum, left and right. You're facilitating the movement of information and you're activating both halves of your brain. So literally, you are forcing a higher percentage use of your brain into activation as you do this exercise. And the results are amazing. Okay, and all the while I'm still focusing on that, uh, that feeling of That's stuckness. And okay, so what's next? What happens next? So what, you, uh, what you'll notice is that uh, you're gonna do this exercise and uh, maybe 15 minutes, 45 minutes, everybody's different. Uh, but you'll notice during it, uh, when you stop, you take a break every so often and notice the center line of your body. Uh, some okay. people feel a minor amount of pain, uh, uh, then heat, and then a feeling of release. Maybe that starts in your belly and then it moves up to your heart and you feel pain in your heart or in your, on your spine, in your back. Maybe you start choking. So it m literally, physically moves. And as soon as it starts moving, uh, it, it typically it'll come off of its high a bit. Uh, and then eventually, as it either goes up or down, it'll go right down to your feet and out your feet. Uh, you don't feel that way anymore. And your body has released it. Literally, uh, we have people that feel pain in their feet, like heat in their feet as it's releasing or even fingertips. Anyway, it's an interesting physical phenomenon but um, that really works. So that's pretty interesting. It really sounds like this thing, this thing that we've been stuck on, the emotion of it that we're focusing on as we throw the ball, starts to move around the body before it moves out. Is that what you're saying? So, you know, in a lot of cases? Yes, yes. In most cases, they can actually physically feel it. Not everybody does, but most people do. And, uh, and at the end, what you do is you just put it back on a scale of one to 10. You know, I, I was a eight and now I'm a three. You keep doing it and then do it some more and it'll go down to a zero and it, it's gone. So how long does this normally take? So, I mean, I, I, you know, if it's going to move through your body, it sounds like it might take a few minutes. What's the average time or is there an average? You know, it's so interesting. Um, I've had literally seven minutes, you know, um, but I've, I've also seen people, you know, go an hour. Yeah. So um, uh, at about 15 minutes, I have people check in, see how they're doing and then do another 15 minute cycle. So we're doing 15 minute cycles. You know, it's not uncommon to go 45 minutes, uh, 30 minutes. Um, it's everybody's a little bit different. For some reason, uh, I find it very interesting. This is a strange, I haven't told anybody this, but um, music teachers, musicians, uh, they seem to actually be faster. I, they, I, I think they're crossing uh, the, the, um, the corpus callosum and they're, they activate, they're naturally activating left, right with the music that they do. And somehow uh, there's neuroplasticity uh, that, that they have kind of a, like a muscle, exercise their neuroplasticity. And this is just another way that really helps them get rid of that issue. That's pretty interesting, be an interesting, uh, you know, test to run to see. But yeah. even though, you know, I mean, seven minutes to an hour for a problem that you've had some people their entire lives. I mean, I know in a seminar before we had people who had problems for 60 years that they were then able to release. So that's, you know, that's a pretty amazing thing. And I would imagine it has to do with the readiness to of the person uh, using the ball. You know, how ready they might be, do you think? Uh, actually... Uh, if they're ready to, if they're ready to focus on it and physically do the exercise, I would call this like a manual override. Yeah, interesting. It does not matter you're ready or you're not. If you focus on it and do this exercise, your body will force your mind and and your energy systems to release it. It's a, uh, it is, um, <laughs> it's a, it's the uh, manual override button. So, yeah. I love that. In the age of, of making, uh, you know, hacks, life hacks, a manual override 
to that kind of a, a your nervous system is a pretty good thing to have. Yeah, absolutely. You know, then what happens? So pretty soon, this stuck feeling, it leaves your physiology. It's gone. Now what? So what you do, uh, it, you get to the point where it goes down to nothing. You feel nothing about this thing, which is a, kind of a strange absence is uh, the best way I can describe it. From that point, um, uh, what I recommend for people to do, uh, on the website, uh, a cognitive movement website, there's an after exercise area. And it, it um, self-love and acceptance, there's an exercise I have for that, which a lot of people don't know or understand. I certainly didn't. I heard it before, but I didn't really know what the hell that was. So anyway, there's a, there's a part of an after exercise you can do there. The other thing that you can do is uh, also it's manifesting you know when you're uh when you're in that state you have um kind of a wonderful state to go to the next level in the game which is to focus on the thing that you want and desire in your life and do the exercise for that it works on releasing and also uh it works to line you up energetically with the things that you want to make happen in your life which is a whole nother thing. We're doing a video on that. Awesome. Well, I mean, I think uh, it's a really exciting prospect to be able to uh, manually override or even just in general, release something that you've been stuck with for, you know, many, many years, or even, even just the last five minutes. I mean, imagine this for somebody who realizes they're stuck right now and is able to clear it right now rather than hold on to it for the next 60 years. I mean, oh. woo! Awesome. Yeah, I, mean, I, I wish I, I wish I had this tool when I was, you know, a teenager and I had yeah. my life. I, you know, things would have gone a little bit different. <laughs> I think they might. So, okay. Well, I mean, we could talk about this forever, but we're going to talk about this a whole lot more uh, in our upcoming webinar, free webinar for uh, participants to join in and ask you the questions they want to ask, the things they're curious about, about Cogno movement and, you know, some of the other work that you do as well. So, um, we're going to ask everybody to join us then. I'll be doing the technical part and helping us keep on track and stay in some sort of a time frame. But uh, Bill's going to be here to answer all of these questions and more, and uh, we'll get more fascinating information. So I encourage everybody to register, please, right away, and uh, get signed up. Let us know you're going to be there, and we'll see you all uh, 6 p.m., June 14th, 6 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, we'll all meet up there and uh, pick Bill's brain more about Cogno movement. Sound good, Bill? Fantastic. Thank you so much. Okay. See y'all then. Okay. Bye-bye.